All right, so the next uh, project we've got here on uh, Fury Garage is uh, 2004 or three or one or something, uh, C180 W203 Mercedes compressor. So this is the liftback version, I guess. Two door, uh, has a moonroof, uh, automatic and supercharged four cylinder engine, 1.8 liter. And uh, it was bought from an auction for quite cheaply and it had a warning light on the dash and then once it was picked up it was discovered there are actually two warning lights on the dash and that the sunroof didn't work the sunroof was a relatively easy fix uh, ended up being a stripped cog so mercedes wanted fifteen hundred dollars for just the whole motor which had the cog inside it you couldn't buy the cog individually but ebay delivered the goods with like a ten dollar cog i haven't gotten around to opening it up and replacing it but uh should all be pretty straightforward i might do a video on that later but um, as we started driving it around, we quickly realized that this actually has a blown head gasket. So yeah, that's uh, it's our super awesome job for the next couple of little whiles. If I can open this with one hand, there we go. As you can see, it's an extremely clean example of this car. It's only done 100,000 Ks. And uh, we presume that it was owned by, you know, you know a, a, an owner that garaged it and looked after it and serviced it well and everything. and. For whatever reason the head gasket failed who knows maybe it didn't get serviced regularly enough i don't know why head gaskets fail they just do most of the time so uh yeah so we'll start with you know batteries the obvious one over there somewhere or here or wherever it is and then exhaust all the accessories off the front the supercharger i've never done a supercharger before so this will be interesting and then all of the timing gear the head pull that off uh do our best to sort it out and put it back together it is going to be kept and we are going to drive it, but we're not pulling the engine out and we're not getting anything machined because it's just too expensive, especially for what the car is anyway. Like, it's nice, but it's not worth ripping a whole motor down to, uh, to tidy it back up. So I just bought a, an eBay special uh, VRS kit, essentially, and some studs because they talk to yield. So I've never, never worked on a Mercedes, never worked on a late model European car like this before, never worked on this style of engine, never worked on a supercharger. I don't think I've ever set chain timing by myself. So this will be quite an interesting little uh, little ordeal. I also bought a, a Haynes manual for um, 40 bucks or whatever it is, because uh, as I found out when I started Googling, there's virtually no literature that I could find, or not any useful literature anyway, on this car and this job on the internet. So. I'm hoping it's pretty straightforward, but we've got a Haynes manual there to back us up with torque specs and timing marks and all that sort of junk. So yeah, anyway, let's get stuck into it. All right, so if you guys are anything like me and you mainly work on shitty old Holdens and even shittier old Nissans, uh, you're probably going to need to buy some new tools to work on these European cars. So I've got these little external star looking things. Apparently it's called an E-Drive. Oh, upside down. E-Drive. And they just look like that. So it goes from quarter inch drive up to three eighths inch drive. I'm sure you can get bigger ones, but yeah. And then the, uh, the old Haynes workshop manual. So for this specific model, it was really important to check the back. And we go C180 W203 series, including compressor models, special and limited edition. So thankfully I don't have a V6 or an AMG or the 204 series. I have a 203 series, so this is the book for this car. So yeah, let's get started. Alright, so step one, find battery underneath uh, air intake for cabin. Step two, disconnect earth. Step three, make sure you have the right size socket to do the job. And it's an 11. So again, I work on Nissans and Toyotas, they go 10 to 12. Stupid Mercedes is an 11, so get used to this. I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes, I think. All right, second time's a charm. Or is this third? I can't tell. It's about 11 mil. How to get this one moving? Get this hunk of junk off. There we go. So make sure that's off of everything. Oop, don't short it out. Oh, damn. It's gonna be a long fucking project. All right, now the negative's off. Car's powered down. Hope to God that doesn't hit metal and we're good to go. All right, so I've been at this maybe an hour and a half, two hours, and I finally got the rock cover off. It's over there. So pretty much this air box cleaner thing is relatively easy. Then you just take a whole bunch of sensors off. They're all tucked around in horrible places. Um, 
This one was the hardest one to get at. So this was clipped to the bottom of this underneath the power steering pump, which is all the way under there. So I had to stuff a screwdriver in from this side and hit it with a hammer to pop it off. Uh, and then that gave me enough clearance on these wires because I can't, well, I couldn't figure it out or I was too lazy to. It just goes down to the back of the alternator somewhere. So I was able to get the rocker cover off with that. Um, so you can't really see it up here because all the oil's sort of settled back down at the bottom of the sump. But it definitely has a uh, blown head gasket or a cracked head or something. Um, can't really see it in there either. It's been sitting for like a week or so. But you can see it in the rocker cover itself. And look at all that creamy goodness. So this is all water mixed with the oil. And that means that it needs a new head gasket or potentially a new head. Hoping the head gasket, because this car's only done 100,000 Ks. Judging by the amount of gunk that's in here, it's been regularly serviced because that just wipes off. So, yeah, it's pretty good condition. So, yeah, I'll see if I can get the rest of this airbox and supercharger off today. But I think I'm going to stop for lunch now. Alright, so I got the airbox off. This thing is a giant pain in the ass. So, pretty much. Um, you undo all the bolts around the corners and in the middle to get the top off uh, and then probably to make it easier on yourself there's a screw back here that holds on uh, this bracket here for these ECU harness plugs and then the plugs themselves have got these little pull things so you yank one at the front and then one at the back to disconnect these plugs and so you can move them out of the way a little bit and then there's two bolts on the top of the um, airflow meter it looks like and there's one at the bottom it's a real prick to get to uh, you undo these two airbox mounts and then you've got these funny looking things and pretty much what they are is uh, they slide onto that so the airbox will be sitting here somewhere you'll undo the top two bolts and all this ECU stuff and all these other things and the two bolts at the back and then you slide it back, pushing on this airflow meter. And you can't go very far back, but it is enough to slide these back to get them off those two bungs. And then once that's off, you can manipulate it enough to get some tools in behind, underneath here, and get that last bolt out. And uh, the trick that I found is if you drop anything and it does make it to the belly pan, smash the belly pan and it might spit it out the other side, particularly on this car because it's quite springy but uh anyway add it to the pile so this is a bit rude it's just about to take the serpentine belt off and i put my buddy torx bit into the tensioner i put maybe maybe five newton meters of torque on nothing and it just snapped completely crumbled and now there's bits stuck in there thankfully they're not jammed in there i should be able to pick them out with a magnet or something but kind of crap is this? It's got a warranty. It's just obnoxious. Alright, so over the last hour or so I managed to get the alternator out. So the wire that we struggled with that was going over the top of the rocker cover was this plug here and it was just a push down and it'll pull off but it's one of those ones where if it's got any load on it it just locks really hard so you had to sort of like push it this way down the whole plug down so it was in more then push on the release tab then lift up and it would have come off but I don't actually now that I think of it there was something that was like right there so I don't even know if you could have got it off in the car but anyway so there's um, four mounting bolts and I took it off without removing the um, power steering pump but I highly recommend you do remove the power steering pump and this one 13 mil nut on the back that has a plastic cover on it that sucks to get off but Show you down in here. So this high pressure line coming off the power steering pump basically went in front of all of the bolts that hold the, um, the alternator in place and then this wire here was the one that went down and into the alternator. So you can see it's just a simple push pin like that. Gotta put a bit of force on it but yeah so anyway that was annoying. Now that's finally done. Okay. Undo the last couple of bits of the wiring over here and get all this out of the way. Then it's onto the intake manifold, and then I'll probably finish that tomorrow and then tear down the front apron of the car, drop a bunch of fluids, 
deal with the timing stuff and try and get the head off. So hopefully I can get that done by Friday and then have nothing to do over the weekend because I won't have any parts. But anyway, that's where we're at. All right, so I got the intake manifold off. Okay, so the next part to remove was this lower uh, thing. I don't know what it is. All right, so this is what all the uh, head bolts look like. 